The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Day Christmas Hour on this Wednesday, the 24th of July. Gosh, can't believe a week to go. We're, we're, we're wrapping up uh, the month of July. Oh, that means the summer is oh, almost over for us. <laughs> well, we'll deal with that. Let's go to the, the markets. We've got the markets. So I did my webinar last night for subscribers to my opening call. Uh, it really is current what is working what's not working um let me just run the numbers down down 355 at 40,000 and four i spoke about the 41,376.00 exact round number all-time high amazing that you can get that and that portended for me some kind of a pullback we haven't added to our long positions we're waiting for uh, a sharper pullback in the dow uh, maybe it has to test you remember 40,000 uh, and 77 was that high that back in May. We are now under 40,000. This is going to be important because psychologically, the millennial level is always important. That would be the 40,000s. And uh, we'll see what happens. Where we close today is going to be important. And look at this. It's fascinating. We've got the Dow down at 361.9%. You've got the S&P down 70 Five at 5480. And there isn't any real bad news. You see, that's the whole thing about these moves to the downside. And that's the move that I right, let me just do this while I'm thinking about it because I was going to do that earlier and I forgot. The VIX index had a screaming move to the upside from the from the elevens in the last uh, week or two up into the 17s. Then it drops down to 14 yesterday, and today it's up at 16.37. And that's just telling me that the way that it's moving to the upside uh, portends further selling pressure, but it, 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 it had been in spurts, but now it's with higher highs and higher lows. We don't know if it'll take out and go into the mid-17s right now. It's at 16.37. But that weekly chart, that big strong up candle uh, last week, even though we were looking at a pretty mixed market, is telling me that Fund managers have been buying insurance. That's that's all it tells me. I don't get too carried away. Insurance says that there's a chance that triple-digit moves in the Dow and sharp moves down in the S&P is likely until that changes in the VIX index starts to go back under 14. So we're watching that closely. So we got the uh, S&P. Let me just show you this uh, once again. SBX. X, there it is. Uh, underneath. The chain wave, so I, I can take this away. It's served its purpose, this up, up chain line. I always say a channel line, uh, when you've got moving averages that are even more important than a, a trend line, um, that's what I go. And we haven't got the nine period moving average turning pink. So in my webinar last night, I discussed this and I said, look, here is the, here's the Dow. The line period moving average is still way above the 14. But, yeah, we could pull back and see it go pink. But it's starting to get very choppy. And choppy is important to monitor. Here's the S&P. It, it deflected lower in yesterday's move and today's move down. And that nine period moving average is very, very close to turning pink. If it turns pink, it means you've got more of a uh, – um, you've got more pressure to the, in the selling mode. And that's going to be very important to monitor. Look at the QQQ. It already did that. And we were watching. Look from the move up in May. That was May the, uh, May the 6th. It turned from pink to green. When the 9 period moving average goes to green, it's a very positive thing. If it goes to green, it's negative. And sometimes it's just really choppy, but it's a warning to say, be careful because you're going to get some bigger changes. So on the, on the 6th of May, it goes green, and it stays green right up until the 19th of July. Hey, two months, that's not bad, right? So most importantly, what we're looking at is within the context of the pattern itself, 
lower lows and lower highs. Just make it as simple as possible. That says the S&P right now is in a sell signal. Probably by the end of the day, it'll be a sell mode. That's the daily. Let me just change this to the weekly for a moment so you can see something. Look at that. There's a lot to go. It means it has to go to 450 probably for that nine period moving average in the weekly chart to go pink. So I'm not even going to go there. Let's just stick with the daily charts right now because that's what's working. And let's go to the next thing, which is the QQQ has pulled back. The SMHs, the ones that I've been warning about for some time, that's a big dip. Today's down six at 248. We had a short position. We, our, our final short position was to the penny, the low of the other day. What a pity, because that's where we got in. That's where we got taken out. I would have still liked to have held that a little longer, because look how it would have happened to the SOXS. Look at that actually turned green. You don't often get a three-time short position turning green, and it did that anyway. We're not in it right now. So let's go back to this IWM. IWM, look how high it is above. It's down today, down to at 220.60, and what we're looking at is that nine-period moving average. It, the price is way above the nine. The nine is way above the 14. This should hold better. That's the most important thing. We're talking about this bifurcated market we're talking about a rotation and this absolutely is a rotation so i want you to finish with these and we've just done it to say go right here to say that within the context of the three charts the weekly chart of the s p still nicely above the um nine period moving average nine way above the 14. qqq there it is uh it's it is above the, the nine period moving average is above the 14, but the price has gone in between the nine and the 14. That means if it pulls back, as I say, to 450, actually, it'll probably have to go under 450. That weekly chart for the first time will go pink since the October the 3rd or the 5th moved to the upside. It hasn't been, it hasn't gone pink, even with that big sharp sell off in April. And that's really remarkable. And that speaks to the internal strength. All right. Oh, Dow's down 400. That's so much for internal strength. All right. IWM, Russell 2000, now down at 220.59. And uh, most importantly, what we're looking at is within the context of patterns, this right shoulder, we're going to see if it's a failure pattern at a peak A and then go back underneath the low, under 216. So far, this is just saying to me, in the rotation, that markets always uh, are under, very seldom is everything going up and everything going down. There's always some part of the market that is holding well. I'm concerned when the semiconductors, my lead indicator, fails. That just says, be careful. That, that is a market omen. Even if shorter term, you can get counter trend rallies. And I think that's what we, we're seeing now in the IWM. It's the laggard, which has become a bit of a leader. I like it. We are long, we've been added to our longs, had nice gains. But believe me, I'm treating this with a lot of respect because the market conditions could determine whether or not there's a, a fulfillment of a move to the 230s or it's going to fade. Yeah, that's going to be very important. Uh, let's see, we've got the countdown 403, the SP's down 81. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, folks, we're back. And um, just before I uh, forget, I'm in for a few days now um, to see whether or not um, – yeah, so I, I just need to give a, a little public uh, message here. It's just to Garo. Would Garo, could you call me? I think we got some some stuff uh, confused the other day, um, just in terms of contact. Maybe the contact number, but uh, if you can, thank you. So um, within the context of the markets, let me show you something very interesting here. You've got the XPEV, which is the uh, Jinping. Uh, Inc. designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs, having a really good rally just the, uh, just recently. And, of course, China is going full ball with the EVs, as I understand it. I might be wrong, but that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm reading. Now I think a lot of companies um, are getting uh, an influx of um, unsold vehicles, and in the electric area, and I am, I'm just wondering about this because I really think that there are a lot of people that have gone to the electric vehicles in anticipation of one thing, and the reality is something else. And it's just this, there's a encumbrance factor, a, a kind of a, a lack of smoothness with the um, just the charging, the worry, etc. that a lot of people say, do I really need that? So I think that the hybrids are going to benefit a lot from that. But hybrid means that you're also paying a lot more. If you're thinking you're saving anything, the 2000 or 3000 extra that you're paying for the hybrid, um, that doesn't make up for gas and for uh, quite a while. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd look at this, and, and I, it's holding quite well. I'm, I'm quite quite surprised. Not if you're looking at the monthly, not even the weekly, but the daily chart has been having a rise. And if you look at Tesla, and that's our kind of our benchmark here, big move down. 
a disappointment down 28, uh, down 11% at 217. Made that peak D. We're looking at that and said that this is the moment that is going to be, if there's a dreaded H pattern, it takes out the low that was made uh, on the 12th of uh, July at 233.09. That's a big problem. How deep it takes it out could tell us whether we get the one to one in the Chapman Wave methodology of the arch formation. We've just got that. That says 204 is the 200 period exponential moving average for Tesla. Don't, don't be surprised if it starts heading towards that area. Look at General Motors. General Motors uh, came out with fabulous earnings and everything. I, I thought I, somewhere I'd heard it. Yesterday, and I thought, oh, 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 hey, is General Motors making a peak D in the daily chart and a leg D in the weekly chart? Is this going to break above and go into the 51 area? I, it seemed like everything was headed towards that way. And lo and behold, horrible candle yesterday. Just a horrible move. In fact, if you go to the pre-market, I remember seeing it on Bloomberg ticker or um, CNBC just briefly very early in the morning. Um, it was up. It was up at about 50. In fact, I think it was making a new a recovery high. So it goes up about six or seven points pre-market and then comes down and goes below 46. And today is trading at 45.32. Huh. Um, something's not right. But I am looking at this and saying, this, I guess, guess the factor that I wanted to also mention. So that's in the automobile area. But it's also the fact that rates are still pretty high. I think that's also part of it. So if you put the package together, it's not it's un an unsatisfactory pack package. There's a, there's a dissonance there that is people are uh, uh, shying away at this particular point. Not only that, when the average price of a new vehicle is 48,000, this is the average price for a new vehicle, 48000 And the amount, I can't remember offhand what it was, but the amount that people pay extra above the core price because they want the goodies is, is one of the highest levels we've seen in decades. That is the accoutrements, all the stuff that's added on that people don't have to pay it for, but they actually do pay for. It's quite high. So I'm just looking at this thing. And Ford was doing so well just recently. Remember I showed it? Going to a leg D. Now it's got a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's where you've got to be a little careful. And lo and behold, from the 14, I think, 76 area, just um, five sessions ago, it's trading at 13.64. So you just have to be a little careful. Um, and Duffy says, oh, hi, Duffy. I haven't seen you for a while. Elon's uh, political uh, rants have turned Tesla's into pariah cars here in the People's Republic of Berkeley. That makes the cars a very good deal as used cars. Yeah, you know, I've been talking about this for quite some time. How he thinks he can mix politics and business successfully if you're on the wrong side of the politics is just beyond me. It is, I don't know what's going on in this guy's head because he can be brilliant and he can be dumb. And sometimes dumb beats brilliance in terms of the mouth and then you have to pay a penalty for that. So I don't know what's going on. And uh, within that context, uh, you remember we were talking about, I was talking about early last, uh, no, was it Monday? Yeah, Monday or Tuesday? Monday. I started Friday before we knew anything about, um, was it Friday? That's right, yes. So coming into Monday, I said the speed with which uh, Harris would be elevated to a level that was at or maybe even above Biden because of the press would be phenomenal. It would be exponential. And then we'll see in two or three days, does that last? That's the most important thing. Is there is this uh, um, survivability to the increase in popularity? And that's going to be the issue right now. So we'll say, and I said, I'm talking about it. It is political, but it is actually also market related. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is because it is market related. So within that context, we'll know in the, uh, today's Wednesday, maybe by um, maybe by Tuesday. So thank you. A number of people have uh, 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 confided to me. Uh, that they really enjoyed the webinar last night. I try to make it, it's a, one of the different, most different webinars that I've done ever. 
uh, as a webinar that I usually do, all very prepared. This time I had it prepared, but I did it based on exactly what's happening now. And that was really important. So within that context, all I can say is that um, we'll see. Did the best I could. We'll see what happens. And I think it was successful up to up to this point. Now, another question I had was, could I look at the GDX? Yeah, a few people asked me about it. Did I type in the wrong place? I probably did. Okay, GDX. GDX, the gold miners. So GDX is trading up um, nicely. It's up 62 at 38.09. Yes, now this has been the point that I've been making for a while, that regardless of emotion, regardless of all the other facets like the gold price itself, the continuous contract like silver, um, the GDX, the gold miners, I don't know why it is, but over the decades, I've always preferred to see the gold miners I like to see the stocks move up if gold is holding. Doesn't, gold doesn't have to break down. It doesn't have to break up. It just has to hold well. And then I like to see the gold miners do very well. And that's what's happening here. And it's, it's come to the end of the month. Let's see what the month candle uh, looks like. Because if this green candle right here can close, uh, the GDX can get to the 38.50 to 39 area on the closing bell. Uh, on the end of the month, which is uh, Wednesday, a week. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So let's just do Silva before we, um, I run out of time and I forget about it. The Silva went to a lower low. That was a big deal. It did arch, full arch. It came back down and went to a low low in the daily chart. That's the continuous contract. E has gone to trough A, trough B. It's in legs C to the downside. Monthly chart is still a legs, a peak C, a very strong, is looking good. But wait a minute, look at the, um, so I just want to do high grade copper. I was warning about high grade copper. I said, I don't like the fact that it keeps coming down, lower lows and lower highs, just day after day after day, 4.13. Now, I just need to talk about this. I, need, I don't know if I even mentioned it yesterday in, in the webinar, but I did do it in the, uh, uh, during the week. I've been talking about, let me just do this for the moment, that copper coming down is talking about weakness around the world. Would the iShares Global and Timber Forestry ETF did pull back sharply, but it's actually holding pretty nicely. So it's a real mixed picture here, but I don't know if Dr. Copper is still the same old Dr. Copper anymore, if it has quite the same importance. But most importantly, what we're looking at is within the context of bonds, the TLT. And this is going to be, I know a lot of people are starting to say, hey, we're getting real close. September should see an interest rate cut. So I wanted to show you, look, the TLT is really important, but it's stuck in the middle of a range. Not if you're looking at the uh, monthly, the monthly chart making lower lows and lower highs. It looks lousy. Really, chart just looks kind of okay. Nothing to see here. It's just stuck. And the weekly, uh, the daily chart is just fluctuating between the 94s and the uh, 91s. And even more important, uh oh, I just got a call that I can't take. Well, you'll have to. Uh, that's all right. So, uh, most importantly, what we're looking at here is that the I, I can't do it from the yields. Now, uh, Fletch in the Den has just said, what about the HYG? So I showed this last night. So this is the HYG, which is the iShares, iBox, the dollar high yield corporate bond ETF, leg C in the monthly, leg D in the weekly, trying to get to the 200 period moving average of 78.81. These are corporate bonds, and it's a, P, a leg E in the daily chart. And if you go to junk, this is the same thing, but it is the spider Bloomberg high yield bond leg C in the monthly, a leg D in the weekly, not quite as strong as the H Y G, and it's gone to a leg F in the daily chart, but it's up at the highs. So this is just telling me that within the context of the bond area, things are happening, and I and this is just gonna lead me to the next thing which I wanted to talk about because look. This is even more important. Here's the DBA, the DBA Agricultural Fund. We are long from way back in 13, uh, a couple of years ago. It's hit the 26 area. It's pulling back, pulled back. And now it's at 24.18. It's not really doing much. But look at this. Here's wheat. Look at this pullback in wheat. This is really major, going from the seventh, the most recent 736 high. And that was back in May. And it tumbles down to the uh, five. Uh, 20s. Hey, look at soybean. This is a continuous contract. All the way from the 1,350s down to the 1,020s, and here it is at 1,074. Look at corn. Corn, as we say here in the Boston area, just trying to rally off the lows, but it's gone from the 50, uh, uh, 570, 570 area down to the 380s. And here it is at 406. That is deflation. We might not yet see it in the stores, but it is deflationary. So I think that if you're looking at what is going to impact the next big move to the upside in the market when this breather is, this digestive phase is concluded, will be three things. One is you're going to have to see the semiconductors find a base and start another rally. They're in a, a very, uh, in the daily chart, they're in a big, 
consolidation. The weekly chart's gone to a peak D, but it hasn't even gone to a sell signal yet. And I'm suspecting the whole area between 240 and 230, if we get there, that's going to be a big test. What about the, the, and then if we start to see a stock like GIS, which is, um, this is General Mills, start to form a base and actually start to rise because the cost of uh, the ingredients has come down and they start to make more money. That'll be important. That might take a while. But in the meantime, I'm anticipating that we've got some scenario that is kind of beneficial to consumers, and beneficial to the market. But at the same time, there are these, and even used cars. I mean, look, AN. Uh, this is, uh, AN is ordination, off its all-time highs, but still holding pretty well, and uh, this is the auto sales. So it's kind of a mixed picture. Uh, I, I just went through all those autos themselves. Let's see, Toyota Motors, Toyota Motors is down at its lows after hitting the 250s, and a peak D in the weekly chart, peak D in the monthly chart is down at the 198 level. So that's, that's a pretty big pullback for the automobile industry. So you've got to take this seriously. Now, I, I just want to wrap up because they've, they've completed what they needed to do. Remember, Microsoft trading at 436 right now. Now, it's interesting. I, I, I was so busy with everything that we would had that really nice gain in, the, in Microsoft based on all the technique that I have. And then I forgot to... Um, raise the stop, the initial stop. When I looked at it this morning, I said, oh, my God, because I had some technical problems with my newsletter this morning. I had to cut and paste a whole bunch of things. And then I completely go back to Microsoft. So we wouldn't have actually had a loss, um, a small loss, but a loss, loss nevertheless, after a really nice gain. Um, but that was an add-on to our major thing. Now, what I wanted to talk about was Chatham Wave Stalk Lake Formation. I mean, there, I, nowhere in the world, I don't, I've don't. i never seen any of you know, stocks in my, my commodities magazine. I've got it right here. Um, I've read it, you know, for, for decades, and I've never seen anything close to this particular pattern being discussed. I call it the stalk leg. It has a long leg. It's made up of different peaks. That's not the issue. It just goes up, 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 up. And then it, the whole thing about it is it then makes this oval pattern. And the oval pattern says that you can call this the leg, the body, it's always oval body, and then the neck, and the neck goes up, and then when it comes down, the beak, remember, leg, body, neck, beak. When the beak comes down, how it deals with the arch high of the oval is important because it invariably goes into it. If it just goes into it and then bounces, that says the bounce could be very strong, and then you're on your own. So what's the rule? You identify the leg, and then you only really pick this up when you see the oval body. Once you've got the oval body, you anticipate a leg, a leg higher, which is the neck, usually it's deeper and deep, then it comes back, and how it deals with the, the body and then bounces above it is the part that you anticipate will work. That's exactly what we got. It is now done. You're now in a different phase altogether with Microsoft. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. 
But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So let me just clarify, the, the whole thing about champ wave methodology, stone take probation, that bet is done. It's complete, it is finished. Now the beat can actually continue down a little further because we've got that balance and we, we traded that balance we're out of it now and made some money. And now what we're looking at is the one that worked and seems to be continuing was the Chapman Wave uh, Salt Lake Formation in the daily chart of CDE, which is core mining. So let me do this. Uh, I have to move this over here so you can see it. So you can see it's up uh, 19 cents at 672 uh, we have uh, uh, two positions, long positions. Uh, one is a trading, one is the call, and they're holding very well. And it did the same. Look, so it did the leg, the, the oval body, the neck, and the beak. There's the leg, here's the body, here's the neck, here's the beak. And remember, the rule of thumb in this particular pattern is after the beak goes under the arch of the body, which it did by three cents, amazing. 605 was the high, this went to six, down to 602 after this double top at 6.82, and then it sprung back. Now, even though it's working and going towards the left side highs, the, the, the beak part of it is done. So this is, uh, I'll, I'll keep the pattern up, but it's finished now with that. I'm actually looking at a different pattern, which is the triple top potential in a V-shaped pattern. And that's something else. If that takes out six point, I'd, I'd say if it goes over 690, then there's a really good chance that this pattern right here in the weekly, um, I'm anticipating it's still got a couple of weeks to go, but 764 is the high that was made back in 2021, around about October, November. And... It's already been down to $2 in November of 2023, and here it is at 6.73. Now, I have a rule of thumb with the uh, very low-priced stocks that if they make a significant bottom, you can anticipate that they should do a double, then they should do a triple. But very often, stocks that go into the single digits, if they become popular in the sense that money keeps flowing into them. And you can see that it's only just starting. The on-balance volume here in the weekly chart is still very, very poor. If you look at the daily chart, it's starting to, it's, it's almost getting a little overbought. Um, I mean, sorry, it did get overbought when it made that double top PC1, C2. Remember, that acts like a PD. And, and now it's just rallying. And so it's not in the, in even in close to the area of overbought. So um, 
there are different things. But if you look at the weekly chart right here, you can see it is rising. The nine, the nine pre moving average um, is nicely above the 14. So this is good. So all I can say is that the weekly chart is really very nice. The first left side, right side price time match that I had in this technique that I use, the cup formation has been surpassed. I can now actually lift it up. It's almost the same thing. And it's going to go here. So let's just see if in the in the entire month of July, which has one week to go, it's even able to think about getting to the 764 high of November. I don't know. The technicals are still really good in the weekly, in the monthly chart. The weekly stochastics at 91%. That's fabulous. Everything's in play. But that daily chart says, you know, I'm kind of struggling here technically. I've done very nicely with the 914, but the MACD is just barely positive. Stochastics under 80% to 71. On balance volume went sharply low and now it's rallying. So these these three, uh, relative strength even, this is the gray line right there, is okay. It's not great. So price is the arbiter of the trend. And right now the price is doing very nicely. All right. So I wanted to get out of that. Questions came in. Let me see if I can find them. I did that, I did that. Oh, FXI, FXI is the China large cap. Yes, it did have that bounce. And then I said, ah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm kind of done. I think there's a chance that if it breaks 26, it could go down to the 2580 um, area, which is the 200 period exponential moving average. That's exactly where it is right now. And the weekly says, you know, it's kind of struggling. So I would say FXI at this particular point has more of a negative bias then, then he, well, I can't even talk about a positive bias. He just has a negative bias. So, but the magnet of the 200 period moving average could keep it in this area of the 25s. Next question came in. So could I look at, oh, XLF. The XLF is uh, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, down 27 cents at 42.90. It is making a chapter wave uh, dreaded H pattern. It made a peak, but I haven't even got it as a sell signal yet. Uh, it's holding above the nine period moving average, uh, that which is nicely above the 14 period moving average. So 42.90 is the nine, 42.68 uh, is the 14. To get it to go pink, you probably have to see this below 42. So 42.90 right now, down 27 cents. And the monthly chart has this double cup formation, rising highs and rising lows. And it's just in the area of this trend line, how it handles 42.50 as support is one thing. If it's able to get to 42.98, no, I'm not going to say 42.98. I'd have to say 43.20. 43.20 in the next few days before it gets <laughs> to, to a lower low, that's going to be a big issue. But I think it's just digesting gains. So, and now let's do this. this is what I always get. Apple, Apple. Is starting to uh, pull back from that peak E 237.23 high of the 15th of July uh, with a doji side in Chapman. We've started in doji candle right next to it and that gap down. And now we're looking at 219. It's a peak D, a leg D in the weekly chart. By the end of the week, I'm sure it's going to be a peak D below 237.23 and only a leg C. Positive in the monthly. Kind of short term digesting in the weekly, all the technicals are still very good, and the daily chart is negative with the dreaded H failure pattern. Um, and I would just say, two the two 217 to 215 area is going to be really important support this week. I doubt it, a nice sudden turnaround is only down 300, and yeah, can I read that? 308. Oh, very good. The S&P hasn't yet turned up. So this is going to be very important. Uh, so questions came in. Let me just see. I had a question over here. Oh, Amazon. Amazon, we'll do the A's. Amazon is pulling back from the 201.20 high of the 8th of uh, July. I, I think I'd spoken about this in the two uh, stocks we spoke about a second ago, Apple. And at the all-time high of 201.20 in Amazon, the very next session had a tiny doji silent, silent doji candle. I have a webinar on the silent doji. Don't use it very often, but it is a particular technique that I, I, I really like. Um, and I did say I anticipated that uh, Amazon could be pulling back, and I wasn't sure how deep it is based on the, the strength of the weekly chart. 
but even the strength of the weekly chart is saying that that's one thing. The daily chart has pulled back really sharply. It's gone from 201 to 180. Now it's at 180. After hitting 188, it's now at 183. So it's it's fading. And the only thing I can say for closes under 178, um, it's going to do two things. One is going to then target the, towards the 173.87 low of uh, it might have been first of June, uh, and but most importantly, it start in fact the app that's forming to say there's a chance Amazon might actually take another couple of weeks, maybe two weeks, to digest these things. I'll be back in a moment. Dow is down 285. Woo! Nice turnaround for some reason. I'll be back in a moment. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv i folks, be back the google is down very sharply down seven at 176.53 after making it 193.31 i've got to take this kind of seriously right now even though the iwm uh, which is what we are. Oh, did I type it in the wrong place? Uh, IWM is doing very well. Um, IWM right there. So um, let me just do this right now. Uh, one second. Can do this. All right. So, um, yeah, look at how it is. Only down 38 cents. So within the context of what's working, there are certain areas that are working that we've been talking about that are holding well just got to be very careful because the broader market is not 
Yes, I can. Uh, the broader market is doing uh, something that is, it should be detrimental to even the, 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 the sectors that are working. But actually all it's doing is putting a limit on the upside. <clears throat> so take this seriously and just make sure that within the context of uh, what your positions are, I, I said earlier that yeah, if you're taking some profits off, that's fine. You can make a plan to see where you would like to put them back. So let me just do this as we're about to wrap up the segment and today's show. Um, the Dow right now is down pretty darn sharply. It's down. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong key. It is down. It's come back a little bit, but that's not the issue. The issue is that it went under the 14 period moving average for the first time in about a month. And it hasn't closed under it, but it is starting to test the downside. But I also think that there's good support between this 40,000. I don't want to see it close under 40,000, but that's not the issue. It's really the whole 39,700 area. 700 to 500, that's going to be really important. If that starts to go, that's going to impact the weekly chart. Now, but it's a pretty much the same story in the other industries. And as I said, the Russell 2000 small caps is showing good support. I would like to see a good comeback by the end of the day, uh, and that'll be a good sign. So in the meantime, check out my opening call daily newsletter, and I will see you tomorrow. Just do the news first, and then we'll be back tomorrow.